Inside this box is 373 Magic the Gathering cards. Well, they're not all Magic the Gathering cards. In my hand right now in this butch here, there's a Charizard. This collection of cards, which can be more than 300 or less than 300, I'll come to that in a moment. But the idea of it is that it's a miniature gameplay environment where a group of people who know the rules of Magic can sit down and play some cards. This is simply one small portion of it. This is about a fifth of it. I call it the party box. And the idea is that this gives you an even playing field for playing Magic so that you aren't all playing Commander decks at different disparaging levels. That's the basic baseline premise. You're all playing with the same power level. That power level is bad crazy though. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the party box in two ways. The basics to allow you to go and make your own, the philosophy behind that and what it's meant to do. And then the extremity that my one's got to with Digimon cards in it and why and how, and some of the stories behind that. So grab a drink, sit down, and let's talk about how it feels to party. If you're looking to pick up singles or steel product for your party box, your command decks or whatever, use the link in the description below at coolstuffinc.com. Get 5% off your order for using my code, support the channel, and get one of these wonderful Orc Army tokens. So kids, this is the party box. This here is all of it, 373 cards. And it's always growing because of Booster Tutor, which I'll come to more in a moment. So let's talk some basic ideas at first. The original origin story of this was that once upon a time, the purple sleeves belonged to my cube, an unpowered cube which you would draft with friends and play. The problem was a lot of my friends moved away from university and I could no longer draft it. Getting drafts to fire alongside normal drafts was just becoming increasingly difficult. So I took my cube apart and I sold some of the cards at the time because I was also struggling for some cash between jobs. But I had a load of it still sleeved up. So I took the bits that I thought were fun for a multiplayer environment, put them to a big stack and said, this is a box we can play from late night at GPs or when we're drinking or, or as the last game of the night on a commander session where we don't want to play with our decks anymore. Now the important point is some people will just want to play Commander. So don't force this upon people that don't want to play with not their deck. One of the good things about Commander is ownership, right? But the, one of the biggest downsides of Commander is that it really pushes the power level and requires you to have rule zero conversation to make sure you're on the same page. I'm not saying this is a replacement for Commander. I'm saying this is, uh, this is Commander with lower stakes. This is Commander if Commander and Mario Party had a baby and that baby had Digimon cards in it. So let's talk the basic rules of playing with this stack of Magic the Gathering cards and some other bits. In this instance, you're playing a multiplayer format. There's gonna be usually four players. You can go up to five or six like with Commander. If I don't explain anything in the, this video, it basically works like normal Magic. That's one of my favorite things to do. When someone says, Vince, do I draw my first turn? I say, of course you do. It's just Magic, except for the caveats I'm about to go into. Every card in this can be placed face down as a land drop in your turn. That land counts as all land types. That's all five plus wastes to allow you to activate Eldrazi Displacer and similar. If one of those lands would leave zones, get flickered, for example, it becomes whatever it is on the other side when it re-enters. If it's an instant or sorcery, it can't re-enter. If it's a planeswalker or a creature or a permanent, it will enter as that permanent. This is described within the rules of magic. It's what happens if you were to flicker a manifested creature, for example. Beyond that, because the deck is so big, whether it be your new one that you're about to build, which is gonna be 200 cards or my one that's approaching 400, it's so big that you can't look, put things on the bottom of it and you can't shuffle it. So in essence, if you need to put things at the bottom, just exile them. If you need to shuffle, just don't. You cannot search and you cannot tutor. A special rule for my one, this is where I have to add rules that you can ignore for house rules, but if you were to get a land off a rampant growth or primeval titan, you simply manifest the top card of your library as a land and face down. That means that prime time is in my cube, oh, like I keep wanting the cube, in my party box, and it's pretty fucking good. And that really is the fundamental basics of it. You want a collection of cards that you never get to play over in other formats. Cards that are really fun to resolve. Cards that are stupid. Cards that make your friends laugh or make you laugh. And then you all play them in a multiplayer environment where you're all drawing from the same deck and you're playing everything down as lands because then the power level is all over the place but in a way that's wonky and fun. Then there's a philosophy idea for it. It's meant to be like Mario Party. So there's, there's no stakes. The points don't mean anything. They're all made up and nothing matters. And thus, it's often advisable to take a line in Party Box that just makes for the best story or is the funniest. You're not necessarily looking to win. Unless you're playing with some really cutthroat individuals, then winning can add into that a little bit. It's more nonsensical than even Commander. Then we get into the more complex side of things that I've added to Party Box. So the first thing I've added is that any card with no mana cost 
is free. For example, the Teferi emblem is in there. Teferi's emblem is in here because of Booster Tutor. More on that in a moment. But Teferi's emblem or any other emblem that you draw can be cast for free. And then once cast, it follows the rule of magic. It's on a stack it can be interacted with. Once it's in play, it's an emblem, so it can't be interacted with. Teferi's emblem is pretty good. I'll come to the balancing of that in a moment. Most other cards, some other card games or trading cards like this Ricky Martin card are free because they don't have a mana cost. And then anything with suspend, like Hypergenesis, for example, is just a cheap, free Eureka that will often backfire on you. Free spells obviously allow one player to rocket ahead quite often, but the point of this is that it is a multiplayer format, and if Commander has proved anything, it's that even a turn one Soul Ring doesn't necessarily win you the game. It can often get you targeted down and killed. Something that this format has taught me is that Teferi's Emblem or a 3000 power Digimon doesn't necessarily win you the game when you can't build around it, when you are literally firing off a Teferi's Emblem against three other opponents who are now going to gun for you. Or in the case of 3000 power creature, you got to find evasion in your randomly stacked pack of ridiculous magic cards, and also people will still gun for you. Often the people deploying a 3000 power Pokemon or a Digimon or, or Card Vice Schwarz card or whatever aren't going to be the winners of the game. They will often lose. And that's one of my favorite things about Party Box. Party Box is a collection of like competitive staples, but it's also really dumb things like every copy of Very Cryptic Command and two copies of the normal Cryptic Command too. My Party Box itself is designed to tell stories. This is a card that a patron, a viewer sent me years ago, a uh, not so good proxy for when Walking Bliss was too expensive. But beyond that, there's a card ripped in half in here from a game of Iron Man that I played with a friend at GP Bologna in 2018. There's Batman from the Versus Card game because I played it with a friend when I was younger and we just, I never wanted to let go of Batman. He's a four mana seven seven creature, by the way, and the house rule is he has protection from villains. What is a villain and what isn't a villain is up for discussion. But again, there's a lot of just magic cards that work and do things and cards from other card games that, you know, cost a load of <laughs> three mana for 10,001 because it's got 10,001 written on it. These cards, like the Vice Schwartz cards and the Digimon cards made it into my party box in particular because I utilize um, a card called Booster Tutor in my party box. The rules for Booster Tutor in my party box is that if you get Demonic Tutor, you have to open a pack, either one of the packs that I have on hand or a pack that you might be able to procure from the shop we're playing in, from the store or what you've got in your bag. And any card you open can be then put into your hand and used. That's how Teferi's Emblem got in. Uh, Ape, who's a long-time patron and friend of mine on my Discord, uh, was playing with me at like Magic Con London pre-pandemic right and he opens a pack of dominaria and he asks me anything and i'm like anything and he's like i guess i'll take the teferi emblem then and now teferi emblem is an integral part of my party box but the whole point is to set up elaborate situations where players who know what they're doing can muck about and do things that you know you don't get to do in normal games of commander like play grizzle brand or prophet of graphics for example or play with cards that are long gone and not competitive anymore or cards that are just absurdly over costed but when you're playing in a weird constructed environment like this end up seeing play. Every card that gets added from another card game has to be um, informed by some form of um, house rules. So in the case of Digimon, six mana, seven thousand, seven thousand, that can Digivolve, which is informed by the rules of Digimon that it can be put onto a CMC4 creature for three mana and you draw a card. There's three Digimon in the deck. The Digimon and Pokemon were added by me without coming from booster tutors to just go alongside the other stuff that has been added. Pokemon, for example, track their damage on them like uh, a Pokemon card would in Pokemon, and they have an activated ability that does this much damage to the active Pokemon or a, po or a creature in play under your opponent's control. If your opponent has no blockers, they can shoot the opponent instead. That's how Pokemon works. That's how this works. And then we have uh, Jokers. If you're not looking to add other cards from other card games, I do recommend adding Jokers to the game. In my mini cube or party box, it's every single card that is a magic card back uh, facing you. So in essence, if you draw one of these, it can be used as any spell or any card that exists in magic that has not been utilized in this session. So for example, if you play like best of three or first of two points with a whole stack and someone uses a Joker for a Black Lotus in game one, it can't be a Black Lotus in game two. And by the same extension, if someone plays Palace Jailer in game one, the Joker can no longer be Palace Jailer in game two. It must be a card that hasn't been used in this session to keep things interesting and to avoid the same old shit. It's always Lotus, Force of Will, Misdirect, Ancestral Recall, Time Walk. They're like the five most common. Then we get Moxes and Soul Rings and similar. There is a small soft ban list for my Jokers, which is essentially any card that instantly ends the game. A good example of this is Leveler. Smart, spiky players will try and play a card that puts the deck into the graveyard so they can pass the turn and win against everyone on the spot. In essence, when you're playing Party Box with me, I'll be the one who says yes or no as to whether you can do that. Not to stop me from winning. I don't fucking care about winning Party Box. That's not the point, right? But it's just that I'd let everyone have some fun. In essence, it's a kind of rule zero conversation, but I'm just trying to stop people from instantly winning. But the same extension, thanks to Booster Tutors, there is a unique uh, promo card from Yu-Gi-Oh in here and a unique um, boot, um, 
uh, code card from Pokemon cards in here too. For example, this is the Yu-Gi-Oh Joker. This was not actually from a pack. I put this in because I received this. I did a thing with Yu-Gi-Oh, a uh, sponsorship. So in some ways, it's also an added memory. A lot of the mini cube is memories. This is one of them. Some of them are just from Booster Shooters and Times Played. Some of them are things added because they've got a story of my channel. Uh, Hornet's Nest is in here. Stuffy Doll is in here. A Yu-Gi-Oh Joker from that time I did a Yu-Gi-Oh thing. It just allows me to tell stories and have memories that I can share with people because that is part of the gathering of magic that I really enjoy. Beyond that, when I do Booster Shooters, people have to sign and date. So for example, this is from 2021. This here is Coach Nelly from Loading Ready One. I've got to play with him in Barcelona and he signed it the wrong year. He signed it 2000. 2003. I was not playing uh, Party Box in 2003 with Coach Nelly. I was just playing it in 2023. He just doesn't know how the date system works. There was a wonderful moment at uh, MagicCon Barcelona where I was playing with an old friend of mine that we, we haven't hung out for like a year. And we were, we were playing Magic for the first time in several years. And at one point he drew a card that had been signed by another mutual friend of ours that we used to play a lot of Magic with. And it was just a moment of self-reflection and and a reminder of good times gone by not in like a that sounds almost sad but it's not it's just i don't know i'm a sentimental nostalgic old fool and it tugs your heartstrings you know and this is one of the cards from the uh magic card market video legitimately opened from a pack of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, danger ogre pogo signed by all four members and myself who are in that game because that will be a memory that i will always have and always cherish in this deck this limited format and then there's a goku because someone opened a pack of dragon ball z at my local store there are a few of the equipments from the theros pre-release because i have them i have all of them knocking around and want to include some of them because they're kind of fun and kind of nutty again no mana cost it's zero in this deck and format this is a sainsbury's promotional lego card a saint bernard that i've had to um, come up with his own rules it's a one one for one hence the triple one in the corner and it can activate for one mana to bounce itself on a creature you control back to your hand thus saving it like a saint bernard rest Rescue dog. Yes, that's convoluted, but it's a very fun card to play with. Sometimes when you're playing party box, you just got to roll with the creator of it, like in this case myself. And I think some cards have gone through iterations of what they do. Uh, everything is aiming towards being the most fun and technical and weird environment for playing Magic in. Got our Yu-Gi-Oh Joker here. And then for this, this is a, um, a playtest card from the Gavin Verhey Unknown events. And here we've got Gade K has done some art on it. I got to play some magic with him in Barcelona. He's a proxy artist who makes some really cool and unique stuff in the modern pop style. This was blank. Gade K was like, do you want me to draw you some art on it? I was like, yeah, yes, please. So he drew some that is evocative of Maitre Tree, which is just incredible. Again, a bespoke, unique part of magic's history and my history playing the game and going to events. And I just love this being part of everything I love about magic. The gathering and the meeting of like-minded souls to play a really cool game. And then some strategy. This is Flicker Wisp. It's one of my favorite cards of all time. Flicker Wisp is a three mana elemental. It's a three power, one toughness flyer. When it ends the battlefield, exile target to permanent and return to the battlefield under its owner's control at the end of turn. There are eight of these in my party box. That's right, there are eight Flicker Wisps. Eight Flicker Wisp because Flicker Wisp is one of the key cards. It's one of the best cards. The full name of the party box is the party box brought to you by Flicker Wisp. If you put Grizzlebrand down as a land, face down like this, and you Flicker Wisp, it will come back at the end of turn as a Grizzlebrand. This is a valid strategy and a key thing that I explained to all players beginning. The Flicker Wisp is the best card in the, the, the mini play environment in the party box. And thus there's eight of them. And thus if they're in the graveyard, people are going to try and reanimate them. They are a premium thing. Of course, you can strip mine you. And sometimes you get your thing and then someone absolutely blows you out by stealing it with um, fine specimens. They go, 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 go look up that card and scry for it. Use that as your joker and steal someone's grizzle brand. That's a super important thing that I've actually skipped and missed out from earlier in the video. I'll probably put a note on screen that someone's probably read and realized I haven't spoken about. But you share graveyards, and you share exile zones, and you share command zones. There are no commanders, but there is one card from Gavin Verhey's Unknown Commander event that can transform one of your creatures, or two cards that can transform one of your creatures into a commander, which can lead to some really, really wacky situations, which is the aim of the game. People have been asking me to do a video on this for a long time, and this is kind of an ad lib video that I left way too late and was meant to be out alongside the card market video where we play this. The video's up, I'll link to it in the uh, cards of this in the description. Party Box is just meant to be Commander, but on crack cocaine. It's meant to be Commander with none of the pissiness that someone's deck's better than yours, none of the are you playing CDH, none of the real pub stomping bollocks. 
you're there to play the game with some friends or strangers is what I do. If you ever see me at an event, I'll be at, I'll have this with me at Magicorn in Amsterdam. I'll have it with me at the gathering in London that's coming up next month. I'll have it with me in Vegas later this year as well. And probably some other events too. If I have it with me, I'm always willing to try and get a game or two of this in during the day in an event because it's so much fun. It's great. Um, filler too. The games last a lot less time than Commander because ludicrous things happen. And also people don't really mind saying, you know what, I've had my fun, the game's over now. I'm making this video to fill you in with this, the story, the history and the philosophy behind my version of Party Box, but I actually push you to go and make your own. Go and find 300 cards that you think are really funny and just stack them in a box, sleeve them up. Again, the sleeves don't really matter. My Party Box is in disparate sleeves because it just doesn't matter. I can't stress enough how low the stakes have gotten. And just jam it at your local store. Hell, add Robo Rosewater cards that are functional as well. Add cards from other games if they can fit within the confines of magic. And just have fun with it. It's a really fun way to explore magic in a, a weird format which removes limited so newbies can play, but also gives you a, a nuanced and interesting environment under the magic rules if you include good cards and interesting cards. Either way, I think I've covered everything. That any card can be a land. That uh, lands can be manifested at the top with search effects. That you can't search your library and you can't shuffle your library and you must exile things that go on the bottom. That spells that cost zero are free. They're the basic rules that I play with. Of course, booster tutor being a key part of the game. If you have more questions, leave them in the comment section below. And if you want to see the whole thing in practice, in working, then now uh, there's a wonderful video of myself and the Cardmarker guys in the comment section down below and in the cards for this video. And if you want to hear more about the philosophy of magic, you can click this one, which is not a card market video. I can't recommend you just go over to only card market. I need to watch my videos too, right? Like I'm a starving artist over here. I'm on my own. I don't have a company bank rolling my efforts. I've got to make my own shit and make my own packed dinners. Packed dinners? Packed lunches. Anyway, 